Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Oh man, we did have us a piece of news come out today. Um, but first I wanted to show you this. This was kind of interesting from Market Watch. This is what we Googled in 2018. And I wanted to scroll down and show you uh, briefly this uh, list. These were searches. Uh, these, these were the searches having to do with news, people, loss, and then the how-to section. And look what we have weighing in at number four, how to buy Ripple. How to buy Bitcoin was underneath Ripple. Well, I want to go ahead and tell you, people, this is going to be a much, much larger search in the coming months and year than it even was in 2018. You just sit back and watch. Um, here's the what is. Uh, what is Bitcoin? You're going to see these. You're going to see these uh, digital asset terms, and they are going to swamp this Google, uh, <clears throat> Google, the Google, whatever they call it, Google. I'm trying to remember the, the site. I'm drawing a blank on the site uh, that you go to. It's called, anyway, I'll think of it in a minute, and many of you will put it in my comment section to remind me. <laughs> but there's a uh, uh, Google website you go to where you can type in searches and you can see how often that they uh, are being searched. And so that'll pop up in my head here in a second. If it doesn't, you guys will all remind me. Moving along, this is the big news. C3 Nick keeps get he's on the ball the last few days, and so I have to I have to show you these tweet these tweets when he when he does his thing. Uh, breaking: Swift CEO makes a swift exit. At the same time, cryptocurrencies and blockchain spawn a bevy of startups offering faster, more traceable ways to send payments. I guess that's a that's a, a quote from the article. This is the article they're talking about. Now, it doesn't really say in here why the guy's stepping down. I didn't see it. I, I skimmed through this. <clears throat> but what's important to note here is um, the title, really. Swift CEO steps down after era of tech disrupting global banking. And so... <clears throat> Oftentimes in the in this uh, world of executives and whether it's startups or or big companies, a lot of times um, these guys you'll see a uh, no pun intended but a swift exit uh, when they see the writing on the wall. One of the better examples of this in history. I have a friend. <laughs> I have a friend who is. Um, who is a big USC fan, and many of you may be USC fans, but I will never forget, um, I, I want to say, I'm trying to get the exact year, I want to say this was 2004, my Auburn Tigers were undefeated, and I still say my Auburn Tigers in 2004 got robbed of a, a potential national title. Remember, um, that was when they had Cadillac Williams. Well, uh, at the same time, USC was a really good team, and USC was coached by Pete Carroll. Well, it was later found out, uh, by pure coincidence, I'm sure, Pete Carroll made his exit from USC and went to coach the Seattle Seahawks. I believe it was right after that year when they, the U USC won the national championship. They put them in the national championship. It, it was, I think it was either... Oklahoma or Ohio State was the uh, team that, I mean, and they just crushed. Whoever it was, they crushed them. And I always felt like Auburn was the team that should have been in that, and they kept them out. Um, and so, but my point in telling you this story is Pete Carroll, um, he made him, himself a very swift exit when he saw, I think he, later on, if you remember, they, uh, it was when they found uh what was his name? Reggie. Man, I'm drawing a blank on everything this morning for some reason. Uh, Reggie, uh, was it Smith? Anyway, the, the running back from USC that left, and I think he ended up at the New Orleans Saints. They found out that he, I can't remember if they found out he was accepting money. It was some kind of controversy where there was a pay-for-play type situation. 
and Pete Carroll swiftly made his exit to go uh, coach with the Seattle Seahawks, thus having no repercussions for himself. That's the kind of thing that this swift CEO exit reminds me of. Um, and so moving along, uh, I thought it, I thought I would uh, make sure and show you this when this Swiss CEO took a stab at Ripple. Anybody remember this? This is from Cybos Highlight Swiss complicated relationship with Bitcoin. This was when Ripple, um, what this was when, in 2017 when Ripple had uh, was doing the Swell event, and they were doing it during this same conference. And this same CEO, he offered one final description of Swiss GPI that left some in the audience aghast, adding, it's not a swell, it's a tsunami. So their technology is a tsunami versus ripples. Yeah, right. Um, okay, moving along. It reminds me, it also reminds me, every time uh, something like this happens, it reminds me of this, uh, the story about the... Uh, Blockbuster CEO once passed up a chance to buy Netflix for only $50 million. And basically the story goes that in 2000, um, Reed Hastings approached Blockbuster CEO John Antioco about, and he wanted to sell for $50 million to them. And he basically got laughed at. Well, who's laughing now? And finally, I wanted to uh, show you this from C3 also this morning. And that he's so right. Now, people, we've been in a bear market for, what, 11 or 12 months now? And I have literally, part of the reason I started my channel was because we were in a bear market. And I wanted people to understand the big picture about digital assets and about Ripple and about how big this all really is. And for that reason... I started this in a bear market and I'm glad that I did because um, to start it, to have started it in a, um, at the top of the market um, would have, it, it, it would, would, when the market crashed, it would have been not only awkward for me and for you, but it, but it would have been a situation where a lot of the things that I've said would not have been taken as seriously while the market was, utterly falling to pieces but i started this channel when we had already gone into our bear market and i'm glad that i did timing's everything sometimes or not maybe most of the time um and so i feel really good about where we are and c3 nick tweeted this we're in the middle of a bear market and the xrp community is more active than ever that is a great sign and i can tell you i did not know c3 nick when i started my channel i didn't even know who the guy was over the course of time, and I, and I know I show a lot of his tweets, but I do it because this guy is, maybe he's just in sync with me on the way he thinks about things. He's a different personality than, than I am. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably, uh, uh, he, he's a lot more measured, I guess I would say, than I am at times. And, and I, sometimes I get excited because I know what this is. I've seen this movie before. Um, and C.E., C3 Nick uh, brings things down to earth, but when he says things like this, this this is something that should really sink in with all of you. I don't know if you realize this right now, but between uh, just a handful of people on Twitter and YouTube, we can literally get in front right now with the help of all of you out there. We are able, as an XRP community right now, to literally get in front of anybody that we want to in the world of blockchain within 24 hours. And that's exciting because that means that we're actually making headway and we're getting our message out. And it's a very exciting time and you should be very excited, not depressed about where we are because we have some very, very exciting times ahead. And I, I make a point to always back up what I'm saying to you with articles or documentation, because um, hype is hype when you're not when you're not backing it up with something. And I, I I say that it's not hype when you're actually showing people things that back up what you're trying to say and the points you're trying to make. And I tr I make a habit of doing that. And C3 Nick's very good at, at, at documenting just about everything he says and, ba and backing things up with that. 
And uh, that's probably why, why we found each other on, on Twitter. And, and it's part of the reason that I take his thing serious. And a lot of other people like XRP Crypto, well, these guys that start to send me things and any of you out there, if you can send me things, I'm interested in the documented things, an article that, that is poignant. I'm interested in the things that, that really can make an impression on people uh, once explained and also, um, when you take, I love taking some of these great articles and, and taking a step back or adding a little bit to it. That's what makes, puts things in perspective for people. Okay. Now I want to give everybody a warning. Make sure your big boy pants are on, not for the market, but for what I'm about to show you. Um, every once in a while, I like, I know there's a lot of young people that listen to my channel. And so every once in a while, um, when I was, when the dot com bubble came along, I was a, I was a much younger man and I was like a lot of you. I was always looking around for a cool business idea or something that's an idea. So I'm about to give you, you guys an idea. This is something that was done during the dot com bubble and it is right for being done right now. It, th this is a business you could create. You could start right now in your living room with no, almost no expense. And the guy that did this that I'm about to show you back in, two th in, the, in 2002 or so, this guy was making, I think, $90,000 a month doing it. And it happened. It was an overnight success. And this could very easily be duplicated by someone that's paying attention out there. Remember, there's opportunity in them there, Hills. And if you're paying attention, uh, you never know what you could do. And I'll, I'll go a step further and, um, and, and tell you that anybody that ends up doing this, and I, I, before I show you this, I want to give you one caveat. The guy that did this, um, he ended up having some lawsuit trouble. And I don't know the details of the lawsuit trouble, but the guy that did this did have some lawsuit issues. And you need to not only study what, what happened with regard to that, but you also need to consult an attorney on this particular idea. And you'll see why when I show it to you. But I want to give you the caveat to be wearing your big boy and big girl pants. If you have any children, I'm about to show you a dirty word because in the name of the website was a dirty word. A bad, the worst, uh, actually, what did they call it on uh, a Christmas story? The, uh, the big one. <laughs> it's the F word. So it's in the name of their website. But I I, I must show you that just to really make you understand how big this was. So here we go. This was back in dot com. It was, uh, he started a website and it was literally the entire word eftcompany.com. That's what he called it. Okay. And this is from the Library of Congress. The website is no longer up. But I know for a fact this guy was making money hand over fist. And what he did, all he did is he created a message board. And the message board was uh, was literally um, every time he he would get tips or he would he would hear about various companies dot com companies that were going out every once in a while he might put on here uh, I'm I'm hearing that that uh, pink slips have been issued at such and such dot com and he would put it on here and then he would uh, he had a comment section where people could come in and comment. He had a section here for internal memos. Now, again, the legalities of putting this out on a website, I don't know what this is. I don't know. You need to consult with an attorney if you decide to go down this road. Ask some questions. Find what you would be allowed to post and not post before you do something like this. But this is ripe. You're talking about an idea for this, for the, the digital asset business. Like Brad Garlinghouse has said many times, you're, there's going to be many, uh, uh, a huge, like 99% of these companies that are digital assets that have put out white papers and that's, that's all there is to them. There's going to be a huge number that fail and disappear. And there's going to be many of them that are declared frauds or that the SEC is going to crack down on. And it would be a killer idea for someone to start a company like this. And I'll take it a step further. If you do put it up, if somebody out there does create a company like this, um, I will mention it in my, in my, um, it, once you get, once you get going and you have a, something worth looking at, send it to me and, and, uh, maybe I'll, 
throw you a bone and 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 uh, send people to it and get help get you started. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that there's opportunity in them there hills. Thanks for listening.